Alright, hello YouTube. We're on the patio, of course. Uh, cameras are uh, aiming a different way. I told Angie I'll do this video tonight. I was going to do it earlier today, but as you see, it's breezy out here. It's cooling down. Uh, we had a nice hot day today. We had a uh, low 90s today for actual air temperatures, but the heat index made it to 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, with the heat index that made it very muggy uh, basically <clears throat> kind of want me to want to have the 118 dry heat instead of the mugginess all right uh, this is story time uh, we haven't done these videos uh, in a long time I think we used to do one or two uh, years past and this is why I just sit back tell you uh, a story of what happened in my life Back in the day, uh, long before I met Angie, this is like when I was a kid back in the 70s. And um, my dad used to work for the railroad. I made that video uh, last about a year or so ago down at the uh, where the old car shops used to be here in town. Uh, my dad used to work for the car shops. Well, he's worked construction, then he worked, then he worked on the rail lines, you know, laying the lines down or repairing the rail lines. Along the way, then my dad got in, into the car shops, uh, basically, and he worked all his career in there until the last couple of years of his, uh, until he had to take medical retirement, uh, and back in 92, he was in the paint shop, so, uh, yeah, that was it, uh, for my dad's career, and that, unfortunately, he's not with us, he died, uh, just back in 96, a couple months after, oh, no, a couple months before I met Angie. Uh, basically, so all right, right now let's get uh, to the story of what happened to one of our vacations. Yeah, why does it involve vacations? Well, this is a doozy. Uh, this is back in 19, I, I would say 78 or 79. Uh, I can't really remember because I was only maybe 10 or 12 years old at the time. But the only thing I do remember is this. Uh, everything went to plan. Well, we didn't really plan because my dad, when when we take vacation, my dad usually takes three weeks to a month off from work because he's a union guy. Uh, basically, he works 11 months and takes and he usually takes about uh, a month off. Uh, takes anywhere from three weeks to a month off in July, and we usually spend about three weeks of it, you know, going on vacation, you know, go out and travel. Uh, we travel about seven, eight hours. Nothing, nothing planned. Just a tent, just a car, some picnic lunch, some food, and a tent. And we just go to we go from campground to campground. They allowed tent camping at the time, and there used to be a lot of places that allowed tent camping back in the day. Today they're more in line of RVs, uh, basically. There's hardly not many places left for tent camping. Discriminations out there, come on guys, if you own a private campground, at least offer a few spots uh, for tent camping, very profitable, just let you know that. Uh, okay, uh, what we did was we, we travel, and our destination, we were leaning on going to Disney World. This is, would be our second trip, so I think this would be, seven, I think this would be 79. Uh, because I think our first trip was in 77. We didn't do anything in 78, but I think 78 we went out west, and I think 79 we were going back to Disney World uh, for the second time. Uh, unfortunately, something happened. Uh, yeah, uh, once we got down, we everything went fine once we got down to uh, Louisiana and around the New Orleans area. Uh, we were supposed to take an interstate going east. We ended up going to the interstate going west. And we kept on going west and west and west. Before we know it, we entered in Texas. And before we know it, we entered Dallas-Fort Worth. And we decided to, to camp there. We took a wrong turn in Louisiana. Uh, we had westward. And we ended up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we spent a the night there. Of course, there was an amusement park nearby but for some reason it was closed for the day I guess they had corporate party there that early that day and decided to close it to the general public this is like around July so I guess they had a day 
had corporate bought out the park. Uh, some corporation bought out the park for the day. So, uh, and they only stayed till up till 5 p.m. Then I think it was closed to the rest of the public the rest of the day. So, but I, but like I said, don't quote me on this. I, I knew what I saw. Uh, I saw a closed park near our campground. Uh, then we plotted, uh, then we plotted, figured, okay, if we leave, head back east, uh, we should have enough money to go uh, to Disney World. Okay, no big deal. Left Dallas Fort Worth, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, we were still heading west. How far west? Let's put it this way. We ended up in New Mexico. That's how far to the west we went. Uh, because we made another wrong turn, my dad made another wrong turn uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area or someplace. I got, you know how mixed up those interstates can be back then. You think they're bad now. Back then they were just as bad. And we didn't have GPS back then. Uh, we just had to learn how to read a road map and I guess reading signs would have been helpful at the time period. Right? Right. So we had to uh, find an old campground. And we got, we got out the road map and it says, okay, let's go west on this interstate. We'll reach down to this interstate. I think it was Interstate 10. And we started going west, uh, not west, but east. Heading east on Interstate 10. Just stay on Interstate 10. Find campgrounds along the way on Interstate 10. Just head east. And we should be okay. Uh, Budget-wise, um, let's put it this way. Budget-wise, we were kind of starting to knock it on wood that we may not have enough money to go. Uh, did we go? We'll find out uh, when we start heading east. So when we started heading east, we found a couple of campgrounds. One was a little... We ended up at... We were supposed to try to find state parks, but finding state parks along an interstate is really harder than finding uh, going through U.S. highways, but we really didn't want to go through all the small towns and trying to find a state park. So we just stayed on the interstate. Uh, it was quicker, faster, but the problem is the campgrounds that was along the interstate was a little bit more pricier at the time, period. And that, oops, excuse me, yeah. So after another night in Texas, we made it to uh, the, we made it within I think we got to uh, Kissimmee, uh, Florida, uh, just about, just uh, on the outside fringe of Disney World, we was able to see, the, we was able to find a campground uh, that was all about tent sites, and we got a tent, and we was able to see the fireworks from Disney World, uh, basically. That was the good news. Now here's the bad news. We didn't have enough money to go. Because time we inked out, time we took those detours, those extra campgrounds. Uh, there was, a, I think, I think we had a car issue. I forgot to mention about a car issue along the way. I think the car overheated uh, because it was uh, because we were in a desert climate and the car was not adjusted to desert climate. Because these cars back in the day was not, if you didn't have to pop a tune up, you was not going to make it. <laughs> So, I know that we had we had the proper tune up. Obviously, we didn't. But uh, then, uh, time we time we had to pay a little mechanic extra fuel costs at the time. Uh, then, unfortunately, time we got to an, uh, just minutes away from Disney World, we found out we had not enough money to go uh, to go in for one day. And back then in the day. Uh, that was like entering the park for like twenty twenty five dollars a person back then. That was very expensive back then. Uh, I think it was about twenty dollars a person, but it was more. It was very expensive because some of these amusement parks were going for seven to eight dollars per person at the time period. Times has changed over the years, did it? And pricing uh, went sky high. On top of that. Uh, basically, so uh, we had to make a drastic change. We had to make a uh, what they call a beeline home, uh, basically. And uh, my young age tells me just find the just stay on the interstate to head home and just travel as much as possible and just make camping a minimum between Florida 
and home. And back to home, we didn't live in Clinton, Iowa. We didn't live in Lomore. We lived in Savannah, Illinois at the time. So we had to adjust all the way up to Savannah, Illinois. And that. So we had to plan a minimum because my dad didn't like to drive more than 10 hours. We had to plan for three, uh, three uh, campgrounds along the way, plus extra fuel and fuel uh, and all that stuff. And uh, boy, and plus we had, like I said, a car was kind of starting to limping along there. Uh, car issues along the way, and that didn't add that didn't add the fun either. Uh, basically, so. Uh, right now, uh, yeah, did we make it home to Savannah? Uh, just barely made it home. Uh, with the money that we were allowed to have, uh, unfortunately, we ended up taking the most of it with us and, you know, kind of overspend places here and there. Uh, the arcade games that we played at the campgrounds, the, you know, maybe like the inner tube rental at the water slide at one of the campgrounds and all that stuff and didn't stay at a whole lot of state parks uh, on this trip. We stayed mostly privately owned uh, campgrounds where basically I took you to one uh, ourselves. The KOA campgrounds what we were talking about here. The campgrounds of America, uh, KOA. Uh, those are the campgrounds we like to stay at a lot if we can't find a, a state park. We stay at one of them, and they usually get pricey at times, depending on the location, at the time period, and that. So, uh, at the time period, you gotta remember this is goes back to 1970. So we didn't make a whole, we made a lot of money, but that was for that time period. Now today, that's not enough uh, to raise a family on, uh, technically in a way. Uh, yeah. So times has changed over the years too. So, yep. But the moral of the story is this. This is what we learned on our vacations. We try to execute this ourselves as much as possible. Is plan for the best, but expect the worst. Uh, otherwise, expect the worst, hope for the best, uh, basically. So like our last year's, our last year's fiasco, uh, on our last year's vacation with our fiasco, I mean, if we didn't push back, let's say our car rental by one extra day, by at least a few hours. Uh, I know we was not gonna make the car rental the night we arrived. Uh, we, so we planned on that. That was very successful on our end. Just when we left Vegas, we didn't plan that too well. And that, I didn't expect to uh, have a car battery to go dead because I think I forgot to turn off the thing completely off in the ignition uh, that controlled the lights. I thought they were manual on the automatic lights to turn off automatically themselves. Obviously, they did not turn off automatically themselves. They stayed on. That killed the battery. And when it killed the battery, it killed any electronics uh, because today's cars are computerized. So, uh, we probably destroyed the computer system in there too. I don't know. But, uh, but lucky for us, we rent our, we rent our, we rent our vehicles. And boy, it got breezy all of a sudden, did it? I can feel the wind just whip up. That means it's cooling down now. Uh, what's this cool? Uh, we need it. But yeah, uh, more of the story is like uh, what my dad screwed up. Plan your trip. Uh, don't expect if you're gonna make a wrong turn, correct yourself on the very next exit, uh, basically. So. Uh, don't depend on your GPS all the time because time you get to a set situation uh, Your GPS is gonna be so outdated because of new construction is just getting done by the day And the GPS can't keep up on these new constructions. So don't depend on your GPS Always depend on go on your Ram and Galley map and use Google Maps once in a while. Look for land points. Uh, when you go to a town that you may be in question what, in this, what intersection it is, look for a certain landmark like a business or something else that could help you along the way. And that, I'll tell you what, it did help us along the way uh, on our trips in the past by using GPS, using Google Maps. We go down a street level, find, uh, find what, what all that is all about. But otherwise, our story time was this, that when I went on vacation with my parents back in 1979, uh, everything went okay until we took the wrong turn in Louisiana. 
then everything went downhill after that. We went, we should have went east, but we went west instead. And uh, we went too far west. Time we correct ourselves, we still continue going west until we got to New Mexico. Actually, I had my two feet in New Mexico before Angie did. I didn't, I think, I forgot to tell her that. Yeah, I think I forgot to tell her that last year. Because I was thinking, I was, I just remembered I was in New Mexico long before we were there in Everton last year on our Amtrak trip. Uh, that's the only time we was able to set our two feet in New Mexico. I already set there, uh, my two feet there back in 1979 because my dad made a mistake. Not once, but twice. Uh, yeah. And, like I said, always plan budget uh, when you go to places like this. Uh, just make sure you have the money to go. And if there's a turn, if there's a travel mistake or mechanical issues, make sure you have enough money for that too. Because if you don't, just like we learned, like my family learned back in 1979, uh, it doesn't pan well too well, uh, basically. So uh, sometimes some of them, sometimes our trips does end pretty well. Sometimes it ends. Uh, sometimes. A financial communication, miscommunication on payments, uh, how the how the people were supposed to get paid on, didn't get communicated one year. We talked, we discussed that. Uh, otherwise, I think the most successful trip we did on this trip was uh, back in uh, 2019, 2020 was okay. Nothing really major. It's just 2020 was just the COVID year and that. So, oh, it's not bad. Uh, at least we had the money to cover our mistakes along the way, right? Okay. All right, we're gonna cut out of here. Please like, share, subscribe, don't forget, subscribe button, notification bell, and maybe we'll do more of the story time. Uh, maybe later, who knows? Right now, we're gonna put the seats back where they belong, so we can do our patio chats. This is not a very good patio chat, but I had to take advantage of the light. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye.